This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. It is the awesome cast live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. We're going to talk tech get geeky here. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter, the video producer, podcaster here in the Pittsburgh area with Sorgatron Media Psychic Media Services. With me is, he's the gadget guru at Big Bank International Esquire. Yeah, that's a real thing. John <laughs> Chichilla. <laughs> that is a real thing. How's it going tonight? Doing great. Doing great, sir. Good to, Good to have you studio. back in Studio A. Back in Studio A. And then we got a few other guests. We have a, a, a very bold representation tonight. First, <laughs> first of all is Amanda Narcissi of Bold Pittsburgh joining us. Is this your first time on the main show? Have we had you? I know we've interviewed once. you before. We've once had you once before, before, way back in the day in the basement. Yes. Yeah, actually. Just since the dirty. basement. Yes, back in the basement days. Back in the basement days, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and of course, uh, graphic designer, writer with Bolt Pittsburgh. Anything else you want to plug that you are doing? Oh my goodness, doing? everything. We'll, we'll, we'll get into some Blogger, more plugs writer, later. But social yes. media, basically. Absolutely. And Apple enthusiast is what we'll say for this show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and also with us is representing Bold Sports here on the Sorgatron Media Podcast and Network. You, you, it, it's nice to have somebody to represent real sports on Thank, this network. Thanks, Sorg. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I, I mean, we do, you know, baseball, football, hockey, basketball, all the fun sports that you can play but yet enjoy to sit back and watch whenever mm. you can't play anymore. Uh, um, I, I, I know you do all the wrestling, so that's right. I, I, I and, have and not followed no, wrestling for a nothing, long time. And I haven't followed sports for a few years. Steve, Steve for note for you guys on audio, not seeing the uh, uh, graphic, of course. Uh, thank you for joining us. I think you bring some sportiness to the network. Too. I, I try. So. Is it the Red Sox hat? Is it the Red Sox hat? Yeah. No, it's the sweet Top Gun shirt. Uh, <laughs> I am Maverick, if you didn't know that. Okay. All right. Is it, is it, does that make your ho- is it, is your co-host Goose? Uh, my co-host is Matt. We'll let him figure out what he wants to be called. <laughs> That's for I'm not going to speak for him. I'll ask him tonight, later on, when we're recording Bold Sports tonight. Okay. All right. Bring it around. Bring it around. I'm partial to Iceman. What, you're partial to Iceman? He was a dick. <laughs> Seems kind of cool. <laughs> I mean, but it, this is like a this is like a Facebook personality test. Which <laughs> which which uh, top gun team member did, did you identify with? So, anyways, this is the awesome cast where these kinds of discussions often break out. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and U- video versions on the YouTube and the Facebook page. And of course, we are live here every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Facebook page, or you can just shortcut that at live.awesomecast.net. Uh, please follow us on awesomecast on the Twitter, as well as hit us up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and the Facebook group for awesomecast, where we talk about a lot of the stories throughout the week and we bring some of them here on the show to talk about as well thank you to our streaming partners riversedgepgh.com uh you can hear us there saturday mornings at 9 a.m as well as the the 405 media.com who's been carrying us uh every weekday five days a week at 9 a.m pacific time noon eastern for you guys here in the pittsburgh area and thank you to our patreon supporters patreon.com slash uh, awesome cast uh, Matt Weller at the coffee club $5 level he's going to get uh, us on gold talking about this weird new AR thing from viewfind that kind of confuses us it's a less than awesome thing so we didn't talk about it on the awesome cast uh, and also Michael Fedor of Mike Fedor show on the Twitter at the fan of the show dollar level you guys can support the show too uh, dollar level and up uh, we have a uh, uh, goodies for you guys there you can support the show and help keep the lights on here in the studio literally 
by contributing on patreon.com slash awesomecast. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. Let's start with the show and tell. Uh, Amanda, you, you brought something. You brought something to, sh- to show off. What is this this globe? What <laughs> we, we were... We were kind of guessing at other things that could be it could have been uh, earlier off air, uh, but uh, <laughs> what what is that thing? So if um, I am a big fan of sitting on the porch during the summertime and enjoying listening to the radio and some things like that, so we love smart houses here. So I brought my new toy, which is a Hugo. Um, it's by Philips. It's really cool. It does sync to HomeKit. Um, if you're an Apple fan, anything like that. And you can basically change the colors, scent designs to it and everything. But it um, And it can act as a nightlight. But it can do different scenes. Oh, it's different... lighting up there. I didn't see it was lighting up right there. <laughs> yeah, so different scenes, different Ooh. things like that. It can look either sit like a fishbowl or else you can prop it up on one side to kind of like angle it. Mm-hmm. Um, the cool thing is about it, like I said, you can des- you can control it with any device um, when you're home or away. Um, night lights, you can carry it with you, things like that. So I really liked it. I thought it was a great outdoor and I, don't, and I don't know if the colors are really coming across that great because it might be a little blown out on the camera, but it, it, it's really it, it's really kind of vibrant yeah. uh, here in person, at least. And you can dim it on HomeKit and things like that. You can and mix other the colors apps too, right? Works it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you mix the colors too to make it almost? Any you can, color? and actually, like in the Philips app, you can. It has already sets like sunset and beach and things like that that makes it glow a special way. There's also a color wheel inside the app where you can rotate it to what color you want it to be and i think it also has one that will just rotate it through all of the colors oh, nice. so that while we're sitting on our front porch having a few beers at the end of the night our neighbors can wonder what kind of disco is going on <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's really cool um it, it, it's it's definitely a great buy mm-hmm. come summertime um or if you just need one of those like like quiet lamps on your nightstand what, what do these run for um, I believe seventy five. Seventy five dollars. So mm-hmm. that's I mean, but it's all self contained light in there. Yeah, it came with a powered charging cord, and but it is cordless, as mm-hmm. you can see. I don't need the cord for it to work. So it's a battery. Um, it has a wireless yeah, technology uh, in it. One hundred and eighty minutes. It'll nice. run for. So not too bad. Um, but the it just came with a cord and it in the box, and it's very easy to sync up to the Philips app. So I could see like if you had like a. Like you can have fun with that with a house party, right? Totally. Uh, like a few of those. Yes. Totally. Definitely. And that's one of the things they showed it on the box, actually on the back of it is it was out like they had three or four of them on like a back patio and like people gathered around them and they were all different colors. So it's something that's like a a talking point mm-hmm. in, in your house. So, but I kind of like it. I think it's. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome. I like the idea too, where you could you could take it and use it almost as a throw light for a podcast or mm-hmm. to light up something temporarily, and then take it back to wherever else you wanted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very it's contained. It's small, like you can fit this in a backpack. Yeah, because we I've, we've seen. Um, I know I know with work hard, there's a few of those like kind of colored LEDs that you can then throw up. And, you know, it, it, they're more directional, so you can throw it up a wall or something, right? You know, but th- that definitely could be something that can work out. Like you'd be put on like the couch behind you guys to kind of throw a light up behind, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. You know, and then we could change it. We could change the lighting per show. You know, a nice yellow you know Depends facade for everything mood. here, and then like red for the wrestling mayhem show, and then whatever the other color schemes fit shows, right? I can totally see now. Sorg's going to be running out to the store and buying like five of these things. And he's going to just start doing video podcasts with the main lights down and these lights up. I'm seeing this. That would, that would be a lot of fun or mess with people in the bathroom. Uh, There's that too. (laughs) I've totally met with us having a smart house and the lights. We can, we can turn them on and off. Uh, from not being at home since they're connected through the Apple TV. Mm-hmm. I've totally been at work and shut the lights off in the living room on Amanda um, <laughs> just because, <laughs> just you know. Funsies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. one time, though, I did it. She didn't even realize it because she was napping. And she realized when my phone went, when her phone went off, and I said, hey, babe, I'm done at work. Can you come get me? 
And she's like, it's dark in here. There's no lights. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, do you have Because I, I know somebody else, I think they were talking about who light, hue lights on one of the podcasts that, that I think both Chill and I listen to about like when the power goes out, do they all go on like full bright afterwards? Yes. Yeah, that like is that. the only glitch about them that is kind of annoying. So mm-hmm. somebody, a friend of mine had... Um, has a house and he just did his room and he there was literally a power failure last week in green tree Mm -hmm. and he woke up to his at 2 a.m in the morning to his room being fully lit up the the lutron (laughs) light switches do that too so if the power goes out all my lights in my basement like the wired in lights all Mm -hmm. come on it's Hmm. a weird glitch it's a weird weird glitch and I don't know if they mean to do that for like emergency. It purposes. feels like like an emergency safety feature, but it just sucks when you just have like I know like here on the beach, we get we'll just have like a glitch in the middle of the night. Yeah, like I'll just be like you know laying there and be like here everything you know all the beeps when everything you know, like come back on right, and uh, it's 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 very odd. It's so. a it's a weird glitch. It's it's weird. If they meant to do it, I don't. understand. But on the bright it. side, you just have to pick up your phone and or yell at your Echo to yeah, literally yeah. on the bright side. Yeah, literally. <laughs> on, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, you have a you have a second awesome thing. I do. We can let you bring another one. Um, <laughs> Which I that, that you, not that you brought one, but but uh, but you you played with an interesting game. You got the demo something. I recently. did. So I couldn't decide between the Hugo, which I just got for Christmas, or um, this Beast of Balances, it's called. Um, it's a really cool, it's a family oriented game. So you can sit around with three or four, two or three people on an iPad, or you can play by yourself or iPhone. Um, or I think it is in Google Play Store also. So you can actually do Android. It's cross. So what you can do is, is you can build... You basically are an animal, and you can battle each other or go on adventures. But the cool thing is, is that you can cross-pollinate or, like, mess with the DNA of the animal. So you can cross, like, a shark and a warthog and then have them battle. But the idea is, is you could, is this little, like, iceberg thing you start with that has the, like the main sensor in it, and it's battery operated. It is not a plug, which I think was kind of cool because mm-hmm. um, you can move it throughout your house. Um, and then you start to stack these animals and you can start with like the demo started with a warthog. So you start with the warthog, you scan it in front of the sensor and you put it on and then you can see it on the land. And then it added a shark and you could see the shark in the warthog and how they like interact. But then at one point you take this surfboard looking cross thing and place it on top of the warthog and then stack the shark on top and they morph together. Hmm. And then it, there was other parts too, too, where like your warthog was getting thirsty. So it was like, give it a water element. So then you had to put like a water droplet thingy next to it and all this other stuff. It was, it was really a neat game. I thought it was cool to tie technology in a game together to where it was family time, but it wasn't and screen time, but it was right, quality right. family time. And it feels like, I mean, it definitely feels like one of those old stack em games, like, like on the surface, right? It, you know, just they're adding a lot of different, you know, kind of depths to it on top of that with the digital. It was also cool because if you made a mistake or you didn't um, put put the animal in front of the sensor first it literally brought a volcano which you saw it in the picture there mm-hmm. it brought this volcano onto the screen and it says take that off there right now and the volcano <laughs> starts to like escalate and then blow up and then the game is gone like the game is lost so if you did the wrong move or you didn't follow instructions on the one part it would this volcano would start to come up and like mm. it was really neat it's a lot of fun that's cool is this any way of significance doing this? It looks like um, um, Sensible Objects seems to be the company, which I may have never heard of before. So it's something a little bit new. I did a little bit of research. This was the only game that they have out right now. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's it's it was a lot of fun. It's really it's cool. different. It's really cool. Uh, awesome. Something a little bit different and physical. Um, I'm going to go follow them on the Instagrams. <laughs> All right. Uh, Steve. Oh, chat them up. Yeah. I got I got to go. I, I saved mine in my phone here. So I had to click out of watching us live on the Facebook to get here so I can pull up what we're doing. So I, as you know, I like sports. Yay. Yay. Uh, <laughs> Listen to bold sports on the Sogotron Media Network. There it is. 
So there's these um, devices that go into your clubs uh, for golf. Also, you can put them in your tennis racket uh, and baseball bat. It's by Zep Labs. Uh, it's um, they uh, clip into the bottom of the bat or into your clubs, also onto your batting gloves or your swing gloves for golf. Uh, and it's and they go to an app on your phone. And it gives you your swing speed and also the angle, your clubs, uh, ball, and uh, everything else so that you can track your swing better, mm -hmm. get your swing velocity, uh, your um, angle of the clubs, and also your distance and driving and so forth. Uh, they could be used in various uh, uh, things that were, and it goes right, yeah, tracks all your matrix, uh, time of impact, everything else there. Um, Amanda saw these not too long ago and thought that she's like, maybe I'll get them for them. But then she forgot about them and realized that they're about a hundred bucks. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> I already play a lot of golf as it is. So, but you, there's also other things on here that you can put them into like your running shoes mm -hmm. and so forth to track. Uh, your mileage, your speed, and everything else like that so that you're not carrying your phone or you have a bulky watch on or anything like that. Uh, I'm really not a big tech person, as you all know. Uh, so this is like, oh, I had to find it's a, it's something a, out. It's a nice crossover. It is. It is. And any more with sports. I mean, so I mean, there's so much technology into sports with, with the workouts, uh, workout regiments, uh, all the different uh, machines that are used for for the workouts. Um, they have down to mathematical equations for what you should be eating, what you shouldn't be eating, and mm -hmm. uh, and all that. So there's a lot of tech going on in the sports world, uh, and it's just keep getting more. Uh, back whenever I was playing all of my high school sports and, um, Legion balls and everything else like that, we just ate steroids. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, that stuff gets banned from, yeah, things. yeah, yeah. Where's the app for that? Right. <laughs> yeah. Where's the app for that? You know, um, you know, honestly, you know, Matt and I've talked on bold sports, you know, let all the baseball players, let them all eat steroids, let them all juice. I want to see towering 700 foot home runs landing in the middle of the Allegheny. You still have to be able to hit a damn curveball. Yeah, yeah. You still have to be able to catch up to that ninety-five mile an hour, hundred mile an hour fastball. But that's just my thought on it. <laughs> Not everybody feels the same. Um, the only sports I play anymore is golf, pool, darts, poker. Uh, <laughs> this is interesting because um, Missy, I think you might have been there. There was a pitch session that we saw down in the strip. I think it was Cavo. It was at, and there was somebody there that was. They were they were looking to put a device on like you know the end of a baseball bat and they were looking at the others. I, I, I Diamond start, Kinetics, I think. Diamond Kinetics, yeah, yeah I think that's right. Wow, how did you remember that? Uh, that's amazing. Well, here's here's the fun thing: the law firm that I used to work for. Yeah. The one lawyer's daughter, I guess, was dating the guy. Oh, that was the one that we're, we're like, oh, hey, say hi to the so and so because you yeah. worked with. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how that came about. Interesting. So. Um, it was, that was you know, so there's there's definitely a few companies doing this, and obviously this one pretty wide in the market because you guys, you said you found this like in the store, right? Like, is is this like is this something that's in the Apple store? Or it it was carried in the Apple store. Yes. Okay. For the longest time. Um. Some of the cooler things about it, it is um, able to be just clipped onto the golf club, mm -hmm. uh, golf uh, glove also. So it's not like interfering with the actual clubs or anything like that. Because that, that, that's um, important with like weight and everything, right? So, yeah. so adding kind of messes with that. It was, there was another brand that was doing them onto the clubs and they got a little bit weird because they gave you like 15 pieces in the box. And so you had to screw them into every single club. <laughs> right. So this oh, was a little man. bit easier to where it clipped right onto the gloves. So yeah. it didn't matter which club you grabbed. Yeah. It gave, it was right there the entire time. And same for baseball. Um, they also make a soccer ball. That will actually do your trajectory and um, yeah, speed here, and here's soccer. The, here's the soccer ball. It's an actual ball that, that has, has the tech in inside there. of it. I'm not sure. You, I'm sure it's not doing any justice on the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but for the for the baseball bat, there's <laughs> it for the baseball bat. It clips onto the bottom of the bat here. Um, yeah, and then it's yeah. just a little thing that adds on. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty neat. It, it's pretty neat. I I thought it was interesting to see that type of integration. And actually, here's if you guys on video. Here's a look at the ball itself. It looks like 
Um, Adidas, is it Adidas that does this? Is it a partnership, I guess? I, I think at that time it was a yeah. partnership, yeah. Because uh, Adidas Smart Ball, it, it's, it's listed on Amazon, it looks like. I'm kind of curious now. So yeah. that's cool. So our sports getting a lot smarter. Chill out. I'm surprised. I'm surprised they don't. You, we don't see more of this, like in like even high school or local sports for training. I think you do. I think. I, uh, wait, 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 I think you do in certain schools. In certain schools. Like, yes. I remember. Okay. I re- yeah. was because I remember when I was filming football, high school football. You'd be surprised going from certain schools to others. Which ones had the big video um, databasing system for plays, and which ones didn't? Okay. Right? Yeah. So that alone. So so I think when you go to like I don't know a Bethel Park versus uh some other neighborhood Claire. like they're going to okay uh, they're going <laughs> to you know they're like they're going to have this kind of stuff because they're farming and and developing that talent right and being you know putting more into their sports programs um versus others that don't. So no, I think this is absolutely probably around for those kinds yeah, of with things. the evolution of sports and and whenever i played in high school and in, and in minor leagues and so forth we played all the sports mm-hmm. football baseball hockey soccer everything now it's all special specialization so you don't have the kids playing multiple sports anymore so now they get that whole technology right to them of mm-hmm. bat swings and the programs and everything we didn't have time for that and it wasn't around in the late 80s and 90s and early 90s whenever we played also we didn't get concussions we just got our bell rung <laughs> i mean <laughs> you know <laughs> they didn't invent concussions yet no nope uh <laughs> chilla what are you doing with these old ipads so i found this i was looking for ideas to um do mounts for iPads because I've seen some stuff from a couple different manufacturers and I, I ran onto this on Pinterest actually. Um, it's called the port with an extra O P O O R T. Yes, that's poo. Um, <laughs> oh, the poo word. <laughs> it looks like it's installed in a bathroom too. Yeah, so I think that's actually a kitchen, but it, we can say it's a bathroom. Sure. Um, and home kit's up and running on the, on the device. So, yeah. um, what this does is it kind of gives you an easy way to mount your iPad to the wall. And the concept is also that it's portable. So it's really only mounted with two screws on the back. Bless you. It's it's mounted with two screws on the back. So you could actually put two small screws in a bunch of different places all over the house Mm -hmm. and carry this from room to room. It's also meant that the plug actually goes into the, the the cord goes into the bottom of the iPad that's kind of masked behind the the case. Yeah, why is the site right why is the site the not show you the entire thing? So there is there is one where it, look at the um installing under installing it's under right. it's at the top of the page installing and installing um if the page loads installing an iPad. Yeah, so see how they have the see how they have the screws oh. in front of the, the outlet. Okay. And then you just kind of slide that. So you need to like cover up an outlet more or less to use if this you want thing? The, if you want the cable hidden, mm-hmm. you definitely have to... I think there were, it was a picture where they actually had the cable running down the wall or across the, air, across the area. Um, I just like the concept where you could kind of put this on a pillar as long as you had a... a I'm actually thinking about rewiring now a, a plug in a specific location to have an iPad. And I feel like it's the perfect thing for those... If you have an old iPad 2 or iPad 3 or even iPad Gen 1 sitting around, mm-hmm. um, it's a perfect use case for that. Where you could kind of give either a heads-up display, you could kind of create a menuing system for for smart home type feature functionality. You could put it in the kitchen with a recipe app and a couple other things. Obviously, have FaceTime all over your house. Mm-hmm. Um, I just except thought it was for, pretty cool for Except for the iPad one, so yeah. the uh, nine point seven inch, uh, like I'm looking at the the gray charcoal gray model, uh, is going for forty nine ninety five on Amazon. Yep, and um, they have, it, it's pretty much fifty bucks for either the gray or the white, and it's mm-hmm. pretty much targeted at the nine nine point seven inch devices. Mm-hmm. So I've seen this before, working in restaurants and in kitchens where we had a chef. That had all his stuff on an iPad, except he just had Velcro on the back of it and had Velcro strips played around the kitchen in different areas that he would just take it and stick it to the wall. So this will like protect this it more. Sense. So whenever yeah, the yeah. Velcro wears out, it doesn't just fall and crash on the prep table, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. <laughs> 
I, I like because okay. there's a spot like right next to our stove where I could see putting this. There's there's this, so many spots where I could see. Right. This is a more permanent solution. So yeah. this is like this iPad goes here, nowhere else for this purpose. Boom. But but I love these also the yeah. You know, just get some Velcro and you're good, right? Well, I mean, there's that, but but Chilla, you that you have the screws that you can put places around. It doesn't you, have to live you over one right. Mm-hmm. You, can, one you could have screws in, in multiple places as long as you don't mind the screws being there when you're not when you're not using it. The interesting thing was is so, um, and the name is it's like OtterBox. Mm-hmm. So OtterBox came up with a really cool concept where the OtterBox actually had where the the circle on the back where the Apple logo was was actually a magnet like it had this weird indentation pattern in it and it had a magnet built into it where you could buy these surface mounts that where you could take your iPad and it was kind of the same concept where you could take it from space place to place they had it where it actually went over the back of your um headrests in your car mm-hmm. so you can kind of mount them anywhere that's why I kind of need the headrest one for but some the, things I'm doing but the kit was like the starter kit for just the case and like one magnetic mount to go on like a wall was like 150 bucks. Jeez. And then you're, then it was like 20, anywhere between 25 and, and 50 for each additional like different mount type kit. It was extremely expensive if you wanted to reuse an iPad all over the place, which is why I, I never went in that direction. And, I feel and, like also a magnet next to your iPad. That makes me feel a little weird. But I see, I, I see a lot of, I mean the the whole clothes oh, the yeah, case is magnetic. Too. And now there's yeah, a magnet yeah, inside of yeah. it. Yeah. But back it, in the older generations, it didn't have a right. magnet inside of it, which right. makes me a little weary with the older technology. I, I get weird, uh, you know, a magnet by any technology. Yeah, so, like, I feel you know, really knowing, weird about that. Knowing they're not all magnetic hard drives anymore, floppy drives or anything, but yeah. still, like it's just like mm, magnets bad, you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Generally, we were taught that as kids in school, whenever yeah. you had computer class with the Apple IIs, and the teacher said, "If you bring a magnet in this room, you will get expelled." It was that time, <laughs> like, right, like right. The old school tube TVs. If you got a magnet next to them that they didn't degauss right, and mm-hmm. it, you would have like this weird color ripple effect mm-hmm. across uh-huh. the TV. We'd do it on purpose because it was kind of looked f- cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know? until, you, until you couldn't get it to go away. until until it was stuck. Yeah. yeah. Why did that? Why, who who left this magnet on top of the TV? <laughs> I don't know, Mom. Uh, sorry. sorry about that. I feel like this is a nice um, replacement for, you know, we have all those smart houses where you walk in and there's like five iPads on each wall and you can mm-hmm. like set your alarm code here and adjust the lighting here and the kitchen has one. And <laughs> I feel like this is the way that anybody could have that type yes. of mm-hmm. house. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Again, with that, the old iPads, right? It, you looks, know. it looks professional. Yeah. It, yeah. Looks like yeah. A nice, it really it does. It looks like a nice mount. We've done um, Mac locks. We've looked into that because we were trying to do something similar with one of my clients, and we couldn't find one that looked decent. Like we got a couple of them, just like ones that were tethered, so they wouldn't walk away, right? Because there's a lot of lot of lot of public traffic through, and uh, we had one for the Mac Mini and everything, but it just looked so big and janky, right? Yeah. Like nothing looked decent, and I think there, there's a lot more options these days that that can kind of open that. When, up. Have you been to Alloy? Alley 26. 26. Yeah, not yet. They, so they have the iPads outside the conference rooms for mm-hmm. booking. Okay. Mm-hmm. But to me, that it looks kind of like they're kind of, I feel like they're kind of flimsy, mm-hmm. like the way they're mounted outside. And, and again, I think it's that MacLox thing probably, mm-hmm. right? And that's that's what a lot of them look like. And I was never really happy with the, the builds of any of them that we got our hands on. So yeah. um, so this is kind of a return. We we talked a long time ago. If you go look in the, the awesome chats, uh, we talked with uh, uh, you know, someone from 412 Food Rescue. Um, you know, always making the news, especially on things like Next, Next Pittsburgh and, and, and stuff in the city. Um, but uh, Leah from over there was actually at the Going Deep Summit this past weekend, which I had the opportunity to do the live streaming for along with Work Hard Pittsburgh. You can check out all those videos and presentations over in uh, just look for the Going Deep Summit over on YouTube, and you'll find all those. But I didn't know how far along that their service was going. Uh, so 412 Food Rescue is interested in uh, taking care of food waste, um, you know, the stuff that's thrown away at the end of the day for, like, you know, restaurants and and, uh, and and grocery stores and things like that, and getting them to people, to people that can, you know, that, that need need the access to food and everything, right? Um so, you know, a really cool thing that they've been doing, but I didn't realize how open it was to help because now they got a full-on app going uh, where it, it think Uber, but for 
helping make these distributions happening. So you download the app. It's on the iPhone and it's on the uh, Google uh, Google phones as well. And it'll basically notify you if there's somebody like a restaurant, like a grocery store near you that um, that that has a donation, basically. And then you get to go to that place, pick it up, take it to wherever they need you to. Again, kind of that Uber on demand kind of mentality, right? But you know, on a volunteer basis and everything. Well, Amanda and I saw this on the news mm-hmm. before yeah, before Chris. Uh, it was before the holidays started because they were doing with all the holiday things going on. Right. And we saw that on and, and um, forget who it was. It was somebody on KDK because that's who I watch for news. But they they went around with them and actually did the app and did pickups from uh, Giant Eagle and Bethel. They did one from a restaurant in Bridgeville and took it to uh, different food banks and different churches uh, that that do their um, you know food and and kitchens for for uh, everybody needs to utilize those, which is really awesome because. You know, there is a lot me working in restaurants for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that goes to waste. And it would be awesome if more chefs and restaurants utilize this uh, to go for. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I think previously they they had their own kind of batch of volunteers and and they were trying to like do their own kind of internal distribution network. But they were able to open that up to, hey, I got some time on a Sunday afternoon. Let's see what we can do. Right. Right. And, And that kind of you know, kind of winds that, that out and they've saved, you know, the figures are astonishing for how much food they've saved. That doesn't go to landfills that, that gets used, that goes to people that need it. Um, so it's good to see that growing. And again, kind of, you know, really representing and doing something really cool here in Pittsburgh. So take a look at it. It's uh, 412foodrescue.org or look up 412foodrescue on uh, whichever uh, phone device you have. And speaking of food, and uh, somebody who rescues us supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizzas, our friends over at Slice on Broadway. Check them out. They're right here in Beachview. The original. We always go to the OG Slice on Broadway. All you guys got the fancy new Slice on Broadways and East Liberty and PNC Park and Carnegie. Well, we go to the OG. I can tell you that the Slice in PNC Park is different than the one in Beachview. Really? It is. It, is. it tastes different. Does it, it taste, taste different? It tastes different. In a good way. I bet you the ovens just aren't as seasoned. Just, well, <laughs> the one the one in Beachview is is by far the better one. Absolutely. That's like also when I go to the mini, when, I, when I go get my haircut at my barber in Squirrel Hill, the Minios in Squirrel Hill is by far better and tastes different than the Minios in Mount Lebanon. Okay. Okay. I have not. I've, I, I keep missing I my opportunity. I agree with you on that fact. Yeah. <laughs> the Minios in Squirrel Hill definitely taste different than the Minios in. <laughs> It does, and it's the, definitely different. and and the girl that works there. Every time I see her, uh, she's like, "It's the water different. City water versus suburban oh, water." Oh, there you go. That again, and we have different water this side of the river too. We do, we do. So. I bet you Mount Lebanon has like special bottled water pumped mm. into their pipes. Mm-hmm. I made a comment on a Facebook feed not too long ago that that we get smart water direct through our tap, and we have a special faucet for Pellegrino. Mm. <laughs> Anyways, if you want the good old South of Pittsburgh water version of your pizza made, whatever that has to do with anything, go to Slice on Broadway here at Beachview. SliceonBroadway.com. Ask them about their water sources at PGH underscore Slice on Twitter. Um, Anyways, (laughs) that was interesting. Um, But uh, (laughs) So we did have uh, some submitted things. Um, First of all, uh, Missy uh, uh, shared and... I finally got the watches. I think this came out about when we did the show last week. Burger King explaining net neutrality to people is the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I'm sure you guys have probably seen this like over the past like week uh, or, or so. Um, they, they, they put a video out where um, to explain net neutrality, they, they were delaying the, how quick you got your Whopper. And the explanation was that um, Burger King determined that it was more profitable to sell like chicken fries and chicken sandwiches or something like that. So they were slowing down the access to Whoppers. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the one, I did watch this today and I like how the one guy like took off his glasses and he's like, what? <laughs> he was like, he looked like he was going to jump over the counter at the kid. Like it was so, it was very funny, but he was very like, 
what i'm mad like how could you do that to my whopper it was yeah. so funny i it, was like <laughs> it's, it is a fantastic thing <laughs> this and guy right here he's so this like, guy yeah yeah he's, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like and it's and it's and it's you know so so and it's m m b uh m b p s uh um make make burger making burgers per second i think it is right and and there's a guy that walks up gets his burger at one point he says here i can give you the bag and in 46 seconds i can give you the burger if you just want to hold the bag (laughs) (laughs) and of course they got reactions to him and everything and it is if you don't understand net neutrality and i know i've been trying to explain it here for the past six months um and i don't know if i've been doing that great of a job uh burger king did and uh and you know and you can see the guy that, that, that bought this 26 dollar whopper <laughs> well he's priority um was, was the response uh so that was that was really really cool to see uh this past week and they also they also did another video on bullying the bullying one i didn't think came off as interesting as this one but this one was spot on and uh you know just you know when you use your one when you troll your own audience to make a point <laughs> It's interesting. Uh, makes me wonder which which Burger King they're using for this one, and if they if, if they're always weary whenever they go in there the next time. Um, also, we shared this week. Um, there is a Star Wars. Uh, there's a. Well, I'm pulling up the wrong thing over here. Um, there is a star uh, a Star Wars Secrets of the Empire that was announced this past weekend. Apparently, it's already open because Chris Whitlatch. Uh, who's who's contributed to the show before got to go to it this week and he's got a review for it he says the voice star wars secrets empire was far and away the best virtual reality i have ever experienced great story and graphics and the visor and haptic vest work great forgot i was in the game and fully let go into the immersive game this is the future he says um and he's got a few photos i think this is these are photos from outside i think it is uh for you guys that want to see uh, a little bit of what it is. It, it, so yeah, it's it's the first like you know virtual reality, uh, super immersive. Of course, he's not getting a lot of pictures of inside, but uh, really cool that we got some uh, hands-on experience uh, from Chris uh, out there as well. I think I do have a trailer in here as well. I think Next Web was talking about it, um, but it's it's the story is your um, stormtroopers, your your undercover as stormtroopers. And trying to uh, break into what looks like I think this is a, uh, I think this is a uh, uh, Darth Vader's home planet. Aren't you <laughs> a little short for a storm stormtrooper? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and you know it has like you know the the one droid from uh, Rogue One and things like that. So it looks pretty cool. Of course, this is a nice CGI trailer of everything. You don't really get a terrible sense, I think, of of what it is in there. Um, but it looks like a lot of fun, and it's another reason to go to Disney World uh, for sure. So, because I don't know if I was going for Mickey, but man, I'll go for Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> and and Star Wars at this point, right? So, and do you think they'll start deploying these types of things all over the place, or this will be exclusive? To oh, I think parks? eventually, just like there's a 4D uh, theater now in Kennywood, I mm-hmm. think this is the the kind of tech. This technology is going to be everywhere, uh, 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 popping up at amusement parks over the next few years because that's where you're going to go to that's where people are going to go to get that full big experience i mean this is this is the you know you used to go to the arcade to play the games that were too much for you to get on a console at home right Mm -hmm. um you know and that turned into experiences and that turned into you know other other things like interactive things that that you couldn't get on a on a playstation right this is that thing because vr while becoming more accessible with our phones and things like that or our playstation vr PlayStation v- I've played a little bit of PlayStation VR. It is nice and accessible, but it is not going to compare to a full-on haptic vest crazy thing like this. Mm-hmm. I think this is more commercial end of it because um, I know Pittsburgh the last year has had like little pockets of VR and different things. Like mm-hmm. right now, if you go to the aviary, they have one called Birdly. Oh, where I you got can to actually see that. Like, yeah, yeah, I got to see somebody do it when I was there very recently. It was, it was at the airport. It was at the airport yeah. when I yeah. came through. I was so you people. lay down in it, and they actually have a fan blowing on your face, mm-hmm. and you control the entire thing, and you can fly through like New York City, or you can fly through Pittsburgh or Los Angeles. Um, another one, Kennywood did have it where you actually could wear a helmet on the Skyrocket. And instead of you actually being in Pittsburgh on the Skyrocket, you were actually in outer space. Did they deploy that yet? 
they did deploy it last summer. It was very. They had a lot of. They had a lot of. Yeah, I heard they were having a lot of it. trouble getting it going. Too, yeah. So I had a lot of people say that they like liked it a lot. So I'm not sure. There was a couple other ones too that they did um, VR throughout, but I think this particular one, like the video game style of it, mm-hmm. um, it would have to be done on something like a, a multiple scale because, like, if you put this in a Dave and Buster's, the line outside of it would be ridiculous. Absolutely. So what was the uh, what's the VR that? Kelly and Ronan have that we did after that's the- like an at home one. Like our friends bought an at home one where you had the sensors like all over your was it room. the vibe, the HTC vibe? It sounds I'm like not sure. Or Oculus. Or Oculus. Because you actually had to have like the sensors across right. the room. Like he had poles and everything right, else right, like that, that, which was weird. That sounds like the HTC And vibe, it was very yeah. funny just watching other people do it. I have yeah. like videos of them all like walking around the room. like Because they have a lot of those over at Looking for Group over here in yeah. Brookline. So we've, we've had a chance to play a little bit with those. Well, when we did at our friend's house, you didn't get into I, I did it. I, we they did make a, me dizzy. I can't do that. I, I, we did the, where we rode the roller coaster. We had to mm-hmm. sit in a chair because otherwise mm-hmm. they said you would probably fall over if you were oh, standing yeah. up. Oh, yeah. And then we did the one where you were in a surgery in surgery being a doctor did committing surgery and you know so forth um i kept breaking that one so <laughs> yeah i don't know i, I definitely right just button. think this in like some type of atmosphere like dave and buster's is possible but it would be that you'd have to regulate a time slot like, mm-hmm. like when you showed up that day like when you walk into Dave and Buster's, when they handed you your ticket, they'd be like, "What time would you like to go and do the depends, Star Wars?" Because they they also had those BattleTech. The BattleTech too. pods were yeah. cool. Yeah, but they, mm-hmm. but they were regulated from a timing perspective. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. what I think. You'd have to like block mm-hmm. off. Like you get this for thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. Show up at six thirty to seven thirty. Or six thirty to seven, and that is your time slot to play this game. Mm-hmm. Like that's what I'd see. They'd have to do with but this. It's also interesting because. There's the the high end boutique type experience like we're talking about. Then there's the at home experience that's not going to be the caliber. But the interesting thing I see is by using Gear VR, I see all the other people with with Oculus accounts. So obviously, at some point in time, they've had VR installed and used it. And I often see people live and active. But if I say, hey, when's the last time you watched a 3D movie on your TV at home with like the 3D glasses? Like, I don't know anyone that does that. So there's more of an uptake in this technology than in any of the 3D technology, the at home 3D type technology. Is there? Which, like, like you're saying versus like people that have it and still use it versus people that have a 3d tv yeah 3d tv like i have a 3d tv and i can't tell you the last time i use it i know plenty of other people that have 3d tvs and they don't use them i like i can't even remember the last time i pulled out the glass it really did feel like 3d tv was a stopgap too like well uhd is coming in a few more years 3d tv worked it, it actually worked really well other than you had batteries and glasses that you had to wear it was kind of awkward, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I just feel like the uptake in this is much higher than the uptake in other technologies that we've seen them try to put in, in your house. Absolutely. Yet 3D movies are still, people still you, go see those. You know who should have a VR booth? Who? Millville Music Festival should look into that. Can, can we get that out to them, Missy? Can we can we can we suggest that, that there's a uh, Millville VR, maybe a history of Millville VR we can get going on there? You know, maybe we can get looking for group down there with a with a headset. I want to give a shout out to our friends at MillvilleMusic.org. Uh, it's a big festival. They were I just saw they were just voted um, or nominated as one of the best um, uh, music festivals by somebody today over on their Facebook. But you can check them out. I think that you have until as of this recording Wednesday for music submissions. If you're a band that wants to be a part of this, and this was a huge thing. This took over Millville last year. It was pretty incredible. Uh, so go check it out, millvillemusic.org. They got videos up there talking about the event um, and uh, things like that. So uh, it's a, it, the, the Pittsburgh music scene is huge, and uh, it's good to see it represented there at that event last year and seeing them coming up here on May 12th, 2018. Become a part of that, uh, millvillemusic.org. So, um, and now Brian's in my ears. So are, they talking about, are they talking about doing the pod crawl again? The pod crawl? I haven't heard about the pod crawl, pod crawl yet. But uh, I enjoyed that. I, I did enjoy that. They should that, bring that, that back. They should bring that back. We should go to that same bar 
And we did two bars. Oh, we, my God. oh that was yeah. fun. You know, Amanda and I did the double L. Oh yeah, we did, we didn't do. We sat in the one bar and then we walked down to the bar. I think. Yeah, we yeah. I think we attended somebody else's. Right. Yeah, we recorded yeah. a double L and then we attended you guys at mm-hmm. cousins. I think it was, it was all the way down at the end of the street. And then, yeah, yeah. And, and then, then sidelines it ended with the jag off. With Yeah. 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 That was fun. That there was, was a couple I other that. ones. I love live to. things like that at bars. And then there's that one guy that doesn't understand what's going on and comes over and tries to talk mm-hmm. to us while we're recording. That was <laughs> well, hilarious. Came on, you were at a local bar in Millville. I was at a local bar in Millville. It, it seems right. And, it's and one time at a bar in Millville. It's one time at a bar in Millville. I think it starts a lot of interesting stories. So, uh, no, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe they actually come back. Maybe we should do it through Dormont. Uh, hey, yeah, that's a good idea. If anybody that is a great has idea. an in with bars in, in the South Hills, I would love to do a South Hills pod crawl. Who has ins sort. with bars in South Hills? I, I don't know. I Not me. Definitely not me. <laughs> I don't go to two. bars. They I've got that, two. two. They have got, that, maybe that's um, all we need. Bus tour of I think, the microbreweries. We could jump on that and just podcast jump on the bus oh we could be a bus cast that'd be amazing and you and you go and you, they take welcome you out. back everybody what do you think of gris house <laughs> he was amazing <laughs> only if we call it jump on the bus Wait, cast can we get the double decker bus to do it and then we could be really loud off the top of the oh, double decker yeah. and be like have you seen us, Pittsburgh? Get those windscreens <laughs> ready. We're going to be on top of the Pittsburgh Tours bus. It'll be great. <laughs> oh, these are all great. Uh, double duck, double Get your decker. funky bus <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to make sure we definitely touch on this. No puns intended on this one, Chilla. Um, you, this, this was an interesting story that I hadn't really fathomed. Um, so, so tell me about fake porn. So so we had <laughs> fake news, and now we and I'm really upset Dutters isn't here. So the, this one's pouring one out for for Dutters. Um, <laughs> there's there's this thing going around, and I now I lost the article on the page. I say she's oh, not she's this, not like gone. She's just at a pens was game. This the art, <laughs> artificial intelligence yes. where they're yeah, morphing people's yeah. faces yes. onto porn. So so oh, yeah, it's I read really, this this afternoon, and and we covered. After the last announcement coming out of Creative Cloud and Adobe's tool set, mm-hmm. they talked about how you could take video and upload it into their cloud. And if you wanted to crop people out of an entire video scene or add something into the scene, and I'm like, oh, that's a really cool idea. Like if, if I'm filming something wherever and people walk in the background and I want them gone, you could get Creative Cloud to just mask them out. Mm-hmm. And it would pick up key points in the video is that out yet because i want to play with that yeah i don't know (laughs) but someone on reddit took that same concept and built an application that kind of put will actually let you take and and put a neural network down on your home pc Mm -hmm. and take a picture of somebody and i'm guessing you need a picture from a couple couple different angles more than likely Mm -hmm. um but take a picture of someone and then morph it into porn. So, so the 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 safe for work that we're going to show here on the video version. This is uh, <laughs> uh, apparently Jessica Alba's face swaps with a porn actress using the Deep Fakes app, um, and yeah, that kind of looks like Jessica Alba. I think for the most part, right? Yeah, I, it's definitely passable. And and mm. the question that I think is being asked now is, it's not really that person. So how do you like? What are the legal ramifications of doing this? Wow, the legal ramifications would be huge. But they're say, like I was reading last week that they there's no laws around this. Yeah. No, no, but the, there will be. There will. Be, I mean, there, there will be. be the first time that it comes up an issue in court, right? Or or how? Or the first time a movie drops that somebody morphed at home and said like you know one night in Paris and made Paris Hilton's <laughs> face all over something that she never did. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I mean, I mean, there's been for years the the fake porn jobs of celebrities, right? Oh yeah, they're... with with pictures, right? Mm-hmm. Now this is just takes that to another level. Mm-hmm. So and yeah, I man, I don't know. When I think about it too, like like you could film your own movie, not not porn related at all, right? To take porn out of the equation. Say you wanted to film... But you like- started us with that thought. I just want to point out. It's a little <laughs> hard for us to not... You told us, hey, this done. thing could be fake porn. Let's just not think about porn for a moment. But if you... If you 
if you wanted to do like your own live action video and film it all and then put like Arnold Schwarzenegger in it, mm -hmm. like you could totally you could totally well, recast anything you film with any the, famous person. Well, that know. already and happens. That already happens. Yeah, yeah. Fast and right. Furious just did it when he passed right. away. Right. Um, right. But the, now it's the, now it's the now the text accessible to the home. There's the, the, Winkle, the Winklevi, the Winklevi twins. They mm -hmm. had a secondary actor as the other twin, and then they face swapped the, with the actor that they wanted both of them to be. So. So I, but I, I guess I, the difference is that's a huge studio. Doing right. It. Right. And now this is layman in their basement. Yeah. This doing. is, this is me on my basement in my basement with my two year old computer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's the, what's the, <laughs> thank you for finishing that sentence. Yes, yeah, well, you. What's the show that we watch on uh, the deuce where James Franco plays dual roles in there. They, oh, ha yeah. they, they have to do that somehow. Cause there's several scenes in that show where James Franco's staying there talking to his twin brother, James Franco. You know, I mean, so, and of course, and there's another sample that's in this, and this has got, made the rounds too, where they created a fake video of President uh, Barack Obama saying things that they took off of uh, things he said other places. Like this, this, you know, this is kind of the part of that idea too, right? This is where they could take. This is that's the what is it face to face where they can take mm -hmm. the voice and the picture. And that, you can take. I think you can take a picture. And map it onto someone else's face. Right, right. And then alter the voice. I mean, you kind of get a little bit of this. I mean, how many times have you taken a picture, downloaded it onto your PlayStation for, like, you know, putting it on a skater or a pro wrestler mm -hmm. or your football but player in Madden or something? Wasn't there. Well, the quality's never there, <laughs> but I mean, this is, you know, that is, you know, put, dropping it on like a video game console is like a chunky experience right mm -hmm. it's not the highest end of processing or anything like that or not built for something like this but you know this is kind of the thing could be in the next version right mm -hmm. as this kind of develops so As yeah because these videos end up blurry or pixelated or something else and you can't really tell it's that mm -hmm. person absolutely absolutely um other big news so I thought this was interesting. Waymo, uh, that's Google's uh, artificial uh, intelligence car play. Uh, got to run into Waymo employees last year uh, during some of my uh, uh, shoots uh, as well. But uh, they have ordered thousands, thousands of Chrysler vans, uh, according to a gadget here, uh, for self-driving taxi service. So they're going for it. Um, how soon these get kind of rolled out. They say, they say that they're going to begin delivery in late 2018. So these guys are poised to kind of roll for it. Um, I, I'm guessing you're going to see this in uh, some select areas, probably in the Silicon Valley to begin with, right? Not Pittsburgh? No, Waymo doesn't care about Pittsburgh. Oh, they should. I know, right? I saw again, I forget, was Argos or something? Uh, Argos, uh, it, the, the other automated car company that's here. Like I, they had the old. Um, I passed one today downtown. Um, they have like the old kind of top to them that 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 the Uber self driving cars used to have, where it looked like kind of like a couple three bug eyes coming mm -hmm. kind of sticking out for their sensors. Um, so it, it, it kind of remembering like it's more than just Uber here doing this, even here in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. So everybody's got plays. Ford's got plays. Uh, uh, GM I think is, has a plays or, or uh, Lyft is I think teaming with Ford. Uh, for for whatever they're going to end up doing, so it's 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 really kind of rolling, and it's it's uh, going to be interesting to see what happens here in the next few years. So, um, and also I mentioned the going see, uh, deep summit. Please check that out. And also, um, big announcement. A lot of us got in our emails today that use Hootsuite. Um, it's always been a pain in the butt if you use social media um, to schedule things with with Instagram. There's no direct access. Like Hootsuite had a weird thing where it scheduled something and remind you to post something instead of actually doing it. Uh, well, they just announced today that uh, you can schedule and post images to your Instagram from Hootsuite dashboard. No workarounds, no reminders. The update's going to completely push it directly. So get ready. Oh, well, you, you got something? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, it, <clears throat> I read an article today that Instagram has finally approved scheduling posts for business accounts okay so this so is it's the coming eight, in an update so no the, matter what to instagram yeah. okay. so hootsuite's jumping the shark on oh. this basically because it announced it um instagram if you have a business account which uh we did and we took it away i i, I can't remember my exact reason i didn't like 
it did something does, with the this, analytics. Is this the, the business dashboard situation? Yeah, like it was like you'll get a special dashboard. Like it was something weird, but I didn't like the way it treated the algorithm with my business account. Mm-hmm. So I took away my business account. Um, or it wasn't playing nicely with something like Squarespace or something weird like that. So I took it away, my business account. But if you at, if you have a business account with Instagram, long story short, um, you'll be able to, in a future update, schedule posts and do all of that right in Instagram. Mm-hmm. So you won't, but Hootsuite's jump in the shark. I'm sure later and everybody else will get on this too. Um, buffer but they're the first, too. and that's what but you'll they're remember. The first, and that's what they want to be known Look for. Look at us, so. Hootsuite. We're still around. <laughs> um, no, we, we, we still use Hootsuite, at least to some capacity. But we pair them with other tools um, for our scheduling uh, these days. But uh, but no, we still, we're still still kind of rocking those. So uh, This is great if you're a person that, like us, wants to schedule things and promote a little more efficiently. This is bad if you're a user. And are sick of already of all the advertisements on who's or on Instagram. So, eh, well, I mean, it's a Facebookification of Instagram even more, right? I, I just wonder if who if Instagram will start treating Hootsuite, Buffer, and later like Facebook treats them, like the redheaded stepchildren of posting, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, like you're not going to get to like all the like you have to views. go straight to because Instagram. I miss the days. I miss the days when they didn't. The, I miss the pre-algorithm days of Twitter and Instagram. I agree. And I I Where want those was back. Chronological. So the good old days. Yeah, I miss <laughs> chronology, and I know I still get it with my tweet deck. I still get it, but then every time I turn on like Twitter, like I, it's like I'm I'm seeing two sides of the same service, right? And I don't know. I don't I care was. what I like the in case you missed it. I, I yeah, don't I don't that. care. Just give me my just give me my timeline. It's I'll get helpful. there. Yeah. Yeah. I guarantee exactly. you, I didn't I miss know. it the first time. Don't give it to me the second time. Well, yeah, but guarantee it's like how many times do I see the same post over and over again on Instagram, on Facebook? It's not working, guys. I don't care if there's been more comments. I've seen that before. Stop reminding me, especially mm-hmm. if it was something bad. Those are the posts that keep popping up because people keep commenting on it. Well, right? the worst one is is whenever you start scrolling through someone that says. 22 seconds ago on Twitter and then you go and then you go through and then it's like the next post is like four minutes ago and next post is like 13 seconds ago and then and it's like can you work with me here like there are ways around it that you can do chronology of course you know but, but Facebook's just the, horrible for it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, you know I'll, I'll I'll scroll through Facebook it'd be like five hours ago somebody posted this I scroll through two clicks later 10 seconds ago you get it's like, stuff from like last week I yeah oh like <laughs> yeah. some of these groups well what it is is because somebody will comment on yeah, it yeah it brings it up and it brings it back up again now I've been that asshole too I, where because <laughs> when we were doing some events here in the one group for the neighborhood I, I went back and and went back to the comment from the first event that had the second event, and I was like, "Hey, here's everybody from the event," and I bro- brought everything back up. So <laughs> I, you can't and I knew exactly it. what I was doing. So mm-hmm. I just miss. I don't like the rolling comments in Twitter still, where you can like go beyond the 240 comments with the line or the the like. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. can add a tweet. And make your tweet instead of just being one tweet be like six tweets at once. Like I'm like no. I haven't done that. I, I haven't, I haven't done, done that. that one either. Yeah. If so like if you, where they if, go on Twitter rants and your Twitter rant isn't spaced out like one out of four or two out of four. Instead, yeah. you can actually make it like where you can hit read more and it's like your six Twitter rants. So are you? Around. Is it actually multiple? Like are you entering them as individual tweets or did you just copy and paste a blog post and? It does it. It does it for you. Uh, no, what? How it does it is is there's a little ad symbol in the corner of Twitter. Now, if you notice it, it when you go to send a tweet, you'll do under t- like the two hundred and f- what is it? Two hundred and forty characters. It's, it's um, two, two, I keep it like at one hundred and forty. I try to be the best person in the world still. Um, and but now you can hit it. It's in the app. You can hit the plus symbol, and it makes like a a, a second tweet, and then a third tweet. And then and you just literally like 20 tweets. And you can shoot them all out. And it uploads them all at once. Mm. So you literally can have your entire Twitter rant like boom, 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 boom. Thank you for making it easy to do the less desirable things in Twitter. Uh, <laughs> guys, usually uh, by this point we've uh, uh, plugged Bold Pittsburgh. But uh, we have you here to do that. So um, first of all, Amanda, what's going on with Bold Pittsburgh? What's coming up? What should people be checking out? Well... 
We visited Chula this week, so everybody can go read about that. I almost got to Chula, but the line was too long, but I still have my coupon from the Going Deep Summit to go check it out. It so. is um, very good, very delicious. Indian barbecue. Healthy eating. Um, yes, Indian barbecue. I had the lamb Chula salad. Um, and then afterwards, I felt like I could run a mile because it was so healthy. I didn't want to go nice. home and take a nap. Um, it is kind of a neat new fast casual concept because mm-hmm. you literally can walk in, order your food. They give you a little buzzer and you go sit at your table. When the thing buzzes, you go up and get your food. No waiters, no s- service, no nothing like no service industry, nothing like that. So literally it's, it's like the Panera type of feel nice, to it. Nice. Um, beautiful on the inside. It's really nice. Um, we did that. We'll be, um, We'll be talking about a new pop duo group that is uh, debuting coming up here. We'll have that piece go up this week. Um, We've got some fun things in the work with the podcast, but I'll leave that up to my counterpart to Mm -hmm. talk about that. Um, Chilla, I hope you got all the information on this. (laughs) She said counterpart. I was deferring to you. Oh, no, that's you. Oh. (laughs) Steve, what's going on with Bold Sports? Uh, bold sports. Oh, wow. We're doing a lot. So, uh, Matt and I are going to be actually recording our weekly episode tonight, which will be, uh, bold sports week 21. Uh, and this Sunday, uh, is going to be super bowl Sunday. Uh, we have the Patriots playing the Eagles and we are not necessarily rooting for the Eagles, but more for a <laughs> Patriots loss. And, uh, we're going to have a live uh, bold sports Super Bowl show here at Sorgatron Media Studios on Sunday at 11 a.m. Uh, we have been sponsored by our friends at Penn Brewery. Um, the food and beverage director is uh, Gene Mangrum. He will be here live with us uh, to not only talk sports, but all the fun things that are going on with Penn Brewery. And we'll let him tell you about that on Sunday. Uh, there's lots going on, and also we know we we have this rumor that Gene brings beer uh, with him, so that'll be good. Um, we're gonna do, um, you know, just a fun afternoon. I, I know I got uh, a handful of my buddies are gonna come up, so those Jags will be here, probably trying to make me laugh and make fun of me while I'm sitting here on the couch doing this. <laughs> so yeah, we got lots going on. Sports wise, there's a lot going on in sports in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if you want to know, currently the Penguins are up one nothing at the end of the first period. Uh, I've gotten that update. So awesome! And they can check out the podcast. Of course, we have it on the Sogertron Media uh, Master Feed. Uh, so you subscribe to that to get all the shows, including yours. Yes, and then also you can contact Bold Sports directly at Bold PGH Sports uh, on Twitter. There you go. And then, of course, through Bold Pittsburgh on Facebook. We're under that heading. Nice. Uh, John Chachilla, at Chilla on the Twitters. ChillaTech.net. And you know what? I was thinking, does, have they previewed all the commercials yet for the Super Bowl? No. I, 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 only I, don't, I, like, I don't know. I only I saw, saw the, the Amazon, one. Amazon one. I don't watch that. I don't, want, I don't watch previews. I wait for the day of. I am a purist, damn it. Oh, what did I I am, no. too, but I was upset because I... there was so much hype around than to- last year where they all got released earlier. And this year, I feel like I actually want to watch the Super Bowl mm-hmm. so I can see the commercials because I haven't seen them all. Like, and I that's seen good because we are having a big game uh, Super Bowl watch uh, commercial watch party. So if you're less interested in the sports side of it and more in- interested in the commercial side of it, you can join us here. Uh, you go take your restroom breaks and get your snacks during the game, and we sit down for the commercials. <laughs> um, that will be here at Sorgatron Media Studios. You can check out the event over at Sorgatron Media. I think it's uh, also attached to the Awesome Cast Facebook page as well. Uh, that's how we do our sports ball around here. Uh, so we'll have the sports sports in the morning, and then we'll have the eh, sports in the evening. So, <laughs> Sorg. Hey, you know what? I know my audience. Hey, you know what? That's good. It would be different if the Steelers were in there. Then we'd have a Steelers party. If the Steelers were in there, I would be hopefully not in Pittsburgh this weekend. I feel like we've seen this one before. (laughs) I just got this gnawing feeling like we've seen this one before. And I have more um, surprises watching pro wrestling. So that's where I'm at with sports right now, and that's for another show. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Check out BoldPGH.com and Bold Sports and all those events coming up this Sunday. 
Uh, check out everything awesomecasa.com. I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Uh, thank you to our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.